My people, my people, my people, welcome to the My People Podcast, where we talk with influencers in business, fashion, and lifestyle. I'm your host, The Wealthy Guy. I'm a men's style expert, custom clothier, and published photographer. On this week's episode of the My People Podcast, we are here with Laura Brooks. And for today, I'm not going to actually read her bio because I'm going to let you I'm Miss Miss Laura. I'm gonna let you tell your story yourself. Um, you know, I came in contact with Miss Laura through Instagram, right. and she reached out to me and she told me her story. Yeah. Um, and you know, she said I want to come on the podcast. Yes. And yes. I said, you know what? I'm gonna bring you on the podcast, okay. right? So That's we why I'm here. It, exactly. So, <laughs> so it, it was either. You know, she said she was gonna come to New York, but I knew I was coming down here. Okay. So I said, okay, I'll do it while I'm there in, in Atlanta. Cause right. you know, it'll be a convenient time. Right. And you here. Right. You I'm in the here. building. I'm here. Yes. It's all planted by God. Yes, That's yes, why yes. I came here, even though I was coming there. Right. It worked out. Right. But yes. I said, I have to have Miss Laura on the podcast because she is, you know, during my interaction with you so far, I'm just like, you have a personality. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but, yes, I you know. you definitely have a personality, Thank and you. I said Thank that you. you know I would be happy to yes. share your story you. on the My People Thank Podcast. You. Thank so, Miss Laura Brooks, yes, welcome to the My People Podcast. You're welcome. Thank All you. right. Thank you. Tell us, tell us. You know, let's start from where where you from? I'm from Connecticut. Yep. But I did. All my, how can I say, growing up in New York. Yes. So I've been in New York a good 40 something years yep. of my life. Yep. But I want to mention, you know, even though everyone calls me Laura, yep. that's L O R A. Yep. It's the black Laura, L O R A. <laughs> not that L A U R A. Right now. And my middle initial <laughs> is Vernice. A lot right. of people know me by Vernice because yep. I used to hate my name. Yep. But not realizing that my father gave me that name. Right. That name. Right. It's a combination of uh, his uh, favorite aunt Lona yeah. and his favorite aunt Aura. So uh-huh. he gave me the first name Laura. Right. That's how I got my first name. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so now yes. you you appreciate it. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, and that's I how do. it is sometimes. It's like yeah. sometimes we don't necessarily like either appreciate. The names that we have yes. or certain features that we have until yeah. we get older. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. So so that's so that's good. So they miss Laura, but they also know you as Bernice. Bernice. Yes. Uh but I know you as Miss Laura, so I'm gonna call yes. you Miss Laura. <laughs> that's what I've been calling you. I'm gonna call you Miss Laura. <laughs> That's good. That's uh, good. So Miss Laura from Connecticut, but yeah. you know, grew up really in in New York, yes. in New York City, New York City, in Harlem, yep. in Brooklyn, in the Bronx. Yep. I lived in every borough. Yeah, all five boroughs. But what's your favorite? I'm gonna take the Queens. Really? Yeah. And I I don't know. It's just it reminds me so much of Connecticut. Right. But it was very peaceful, very quiet. Right. But. It was just, I know, an area that I really, really like. Right, you know? right. And I love Harlem, too. Don't get me wrong. Okay, now. Now, Harlem is it. My father, he used to play drums for right. a lot of jazz artists. Uh-huh. So he played in a lot of those uh, spots, small paradise. And right. Just all those jazz clubs in, in Harlem. So, right. Uh, okay, so that's why I was waiting for her. I said, she better come on to say Harlem now. All right. Oh, uh, people would kill me that know me in Harlem. Right, like, Why exactly, did you say Harlem? Exactly. <laughs> uh, I didn't. I honestly didn't expect for you to say Queens. I thought that you were gonna say either like Manhattan or like Brooklyn. I didn't think you were gonna yeah. say Queens, but yeah. I understand why we you say did Queens. We Manhattan too, but Manhattan was a whole nother thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So you know, grew up in 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 New York mostly. Yes. You know, one of the things that you know caught my attention you know in your bio uh-huh. is you had a very storied you know like life yes. in terms of the things that you did yes. and things like that um so when you were younger what did you know let's take it back a little bit what okay. what did you want to be or what did you want to do i i didn't want to be anything yep i really didn't people used to always say that to me you know uh-huh. what do you want to be when you grow up yeah but my father was always bringing me magazine glamour and Vogue and right. pushing me into that modeling. And I never wanted to model either, right. but 
that, that happened for me as right. a result of him always pushing it and telling me how to put my mask in. I was right. really, really close to my father. Right. More than I was my mother. Right. But he was always pushing me into the modeling and this and that. Right. And I didn't even get my first modeling job until I was 30. Right. 30 years old. I don't know how many people can say that. Right. You know, and I was standing on the platform in New York City waiting for the train. Right. And the lady comes up to me and says, oh, she says, you're gorgeous you know you're right. very pleasant to look upon do you right. model and i said no right she said oh you gotta go to ellen tracy's showroom go there tell them that i sent you uh -huh. and i said oh okay she gave me the number and everything and right. i forgot about it i called a couple of days later but i was living in queens then. right and uh i went there and they tried several outfits on me had me walk everything fit like a glove everything they put on it just fit right so right well, you, you know, y'all y'all can't see Miss Laura. We sitting down, but she pretty tall. I didn't expect for you to be that tall, Miss Laura. When you walked in, I said, "Shoo, she tall." I got on flats today. Um, right. So if you had on yeah. heels, you would be even taller. Yeah. So you yeah. have that statuesque, yeah. you yes. know, like shape. Yeah. I never appreciate because when you're in school, you're tall. They say go to the back of the line. Right. Like, go right. sit back there. Right. right. You know. Yeah, a lot Always of times. It, negative. Yeah, yes. 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 Boys yes. will make fun of tall girls. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. don't appreciate it until yeah. later on in, the, in <laughs> life, right? Um, so yeah. let's talk about, right, because when you came to me, you told me your story of how you got to, you know, this point in terms of the things that you created. Yes. All right. So talk to me about, you know, what got you to this point, right? So let's start kind of like at the stroke. Okay. Right? Okay. Well, I was in Connecticut at the time. It was a little while after my mother died. That yep. was in 2009. And uh, I was really working in New York. I worked for Victoria's Secret part-time. Yep. And then I was working for Icon Modeling Agency. Yep. You know, I was a house mom, so I had like seven different buildings and two houses in Westfield, New Jersey's house. Right. Watching all these models like yeah. a house mom, making sure they go to their go sees and do everything. Right. And uh, I also was doing something part time on Saturday and Sunday at the Barmesan. Yeah. So I was doing three and four different things part time, and right. you know. And then when my mother died, I decided because I was living in New Jersey in right. Westfield. Yeah. And uh, uh, commuting into New York, so my mother died in Connecticut. I went back to Connecticut, and uh, I was. Just really kind of sad, kind of taken back because I didn't expect right, that. Right. So I had to move everything from Westville, from the home out there where I was watching the models. And, right. You know, the woman that I was uh, working for, Icon Modeling Agency, she says, well, maybe you should go back to Connecticut. Right. You can't possibly do this and that and everything. Right, right. So that's what I did. Anyway, I went back to Connecticut yep. and my mom died and it was a little disappointed and then there's a family thing everybody was about burying her and right everything. well yeah so we know how that of, is yep a lot of pressure was on me and i never felt that pressure before like what should we do right. all, all my sisters and brothers like what should we do how are we going to pay for the funeral who's going to take care of the house right it was just too much right you know? But anyway, we end up, you know, making arrangements for the her uh, funeral service and everything. Right. So after my mom died, I said, like, "Okay, well, I'll stay here. I got yep. my truck. I can still drive back and forth to New York, go to Victoria's Secret, and do everything on the weekend at right. the barber shop. Thought I could do all that, you know yep. what I mean? So I had a Victoria's Secret transfer me to Connecticut because I was so good at doing my sales. I did makeup for for Victoria's Secret, right? And uh, they transferred me to Connecticut because. You have to be really making a lot of numbers and sales in order right. to transfer you to a different location. Right. You got to be good at what you do. Right. So anyway, they transferred me, and I was there at my mom. She had already died. We buried her and everything. And I, just all the stress, yep. you know, between the family, the burial, yep. who's going to take care of the house. My yep. little sister was there, my little brother. Yep. It was just too much. And I end up uh, actually on, it was on a Thursday. Yep. I was leaving Victoria's Secret and I had to uh, make an appointment with some young girls yep. that needed their makeup done because that's what I did in the right. store. But this is in Connecticut, Trauma, Connecticut. And uh, I had set up an appointment to go do these girls' makeup yep. in Stratford, Connecticut. Yep. So anyway, I was on my way to Stratford to Connecticut yep. that morning. I had to do their makeup. 
Well, actually, before then, let me let me go back a little bit. Yep. Because I had the stroke before then, but I remember I had set the appointment on a Friday to right. do their makeup because it was prom night. Right. Thursday I had the stroke. Uh huh. But let me tell you, Thursday when I had the stroke, when leaving Victoria's Secret, mm -hmm. okay, I had went downtown to uh, uh, the library to get all the information on where I had to go, talk to the parents and right. everything. And as I was in the library early that morning, yep. getting their name and everything, because I didn't have a computer at my mom's house. Right. So I was getting everything out of the library downtown. I was taking my hand yep. and moving it on the mouse. Uh -huh. I'm in the library. Yep. And all of a sudden, my hand went numb. Right. And what I did, I started slapping my hand. Right. I said, what is going on? I'm like, totally. I couldn't even move it. It was right. like, like that. So I said, oh, let me get up because it was very, very hot that morning, like right. 90 degrees. So I got up from there and I said, something's going on. What's going on? Did I start thinking, where am I at? I couldn't remember where I was right. at. But I knew I was doing something in the library. Right. And I walked on out and the guy that was sitting at the front desk asked me, are you all right, Lord? Because they know me coming in there right, all the right. time. So I left on out of there. I walked downstairs. Oh my God, when I think about it, it's just in my heart. Right, so right. Just bear with me because mm -hmm. I'm like, to go through this all over again. Listen, well, we don't need to tell yeah. the story, Miss Laura, because I don't want you having no stroke up in no, here. No, that ain't going to happen because I already got the all word right, of God in me now. I got the word of God in me. Let me tell you, that's the ultimate. That's the whole thing now. Right. He's the one let me tell you this story. Right. So I left on out of the uh, library and I started walking across Main Street. And I remember there was a gospel radio station. Because at first when I was walking across the street, I couldn't think, where am I at? Where am I going? Right. I was like coming in and out of, you know, I'm familiar with this place, but I'm not familiar. Right. So I walked in, in that building and I went to this uh, radio station, WDJ, WDJT. Yep. And it's a gospel radio station in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And the guard was there and he said, All right, you, you're here to see, see somebody who you're here to see. And he said, write down your name because you got to log in. Right. And I couldn't remember. And I said to him, is there a gospel radio station? And he said, yes, it's on the fourth floor. Right. So I went on upstairs mm -hmm. to the fourth floor. When I got in there, there was a guy named uh, Thomas. They call him Big Thomas. He's one of the uh, broadcasters there. And he said, Laura, you know, what's, you know, you look like you have it a heat stroke. It's hot out there. Right. And I couldn't talk. I didn't even realize that I couldn't talk because talk right. all the time because when the guy downstairs asked me who was i here to see and i was like G -g 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 -g. right that's how i was talking and i right. didn't realize that i was having a stroke right so anyway i got upstairs to the gospel station and big t thomas said to me you look like you're having a heat stroke you know it's hot out there it's 91 degrees this right. is like 8 30 in the morning it was right. 91. Anyway, he sat me down and he said, let me give you some water. So he gave me a bottle of water right. and I drank the water. And then he said, uh, you know, can we call somebody or something? Because you're, right. you're stuttering, Lord. You know, I, I think you should go to the hospital. And I said, call, call, call my son. Right. And I had gave him the phone and he called my son because my son was in New York, working in New York. So anyway, he called my son. I guess he talked to my son for a minute, and then I got back on the phone. I said, S -s 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 something wrong me. I, I, you know, he said, Ma, Ma, why don't you go on home or go to the hospital, go to the hospital. Right. Cause he was at work and I said, you don't have to leave from New York to come here. I, 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 I'm right. okay. You right. know, cause I was still stuttering and I didn't know what it was. And maybe I should go home cause it's real hot out here. Right. So instead of me catching the cab home and everything else, you know what I did? I took a bus. What? I took Come a on, bus. I, yes, I did. <laughs> I had no idea about stroke. Never right. thought I would have one. I didn't know. It was just a lot of pressure me not eating right. Find out later. So anyway, I went and took a bus home to my mom's house. And when I uh, took the bus home, I went and laid down. I knew that I had that uh, ladies, them young girls paid me half the money to do their makeup for right. their mom the next day. Right. I laid down. Didn't wake up to the next morning. I got up and needed a ride. I wasn't, and I took a bus, the bus from my mom's house to the train station uh -huh. with my makeup kit and everything. Right. My arm all messed up right. still because I did not want those girls to know or think that I would take their money right. and not right. show up. Right. It was their prom day too. Oh my God. I was like, 
I can't believe this. But anyway, I got on the train. When I finally got to the train station, I dialed the girl's number, one of the young girls that was waiting on me. There was five girls that had to do their makeup. Yeah. But when I got there, their mom came and picked me up. When I got there, there was only three girls. I thank God, because I couldn't use my hand. I right. Couldn't use it. I had to use my left hand. Right. My left hand and part of my, it was unbelievable. I, I was like, you know, so all the time when I was doing the girl's makeup, their mom said, well, you don't have to worry about these other two girls coming because they found somebody else to do their makeup. You only have to do these three. Right. So I was able to do the three girls. And one of the girl's mother asked me, did I need a ride back to the station? And she says, "You, I think you need to go to the hospital. Something's wrong. Right. Because she could tell that I wasn't the same way when she met me in the story of Victoria's right. Secret. Right, right. I was stuttering. I couldn't hardly use his right. hand. I was some uses. So let me, let me ask you this, Miss Laura. You, did you do the makeup? Yes, I did the makeup. A what? liner. I put mascara on. Yes, right. I did. But it, and it looked fun. Yeah, it looked fun. They was happy. I did <laughs> mascara. Yeah, you're happy. I got it done, and they thanked me so much. Even gave me a fifty dollar tip. Right. Let me tell you, the mother brought me back to the train station. When I got to the train station, I called my friend Blanche, Blanche Monroe. Right. She's a nurse. And yeah. I called her and she said, Laura, she actually she called me Vernice. She right. said, Vernice, you're having a stroke. Right. Stay right there. I'm coming to get you. Right. She came and picked me up at the train station, took me to St. Vincent's Hospital in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Took me there and my blood pressure was 230 over a hundred something. Mm -hmm. They said I should have been dead right. because I was thin. My blood pressure was so high, right. and I didn't even realize when I was in, in the library, there was something that burst in the back of my head, and right. I didn't think about it till after they told me it was a stroke, because right. I didn't even, I paid it no mind. I was just trying to get the information right. from the young ladies. Right. But anyway, uh, Blanche took me there to the hospital. My blood pressure was 230 over 100 some, and they immediately <laughs> took me in there, right. put an IV in me and everything, and that's, that's how I had the show. It's some story. And and that's usually how it happens where people don't realize that they're having a stroke or mm -hmm. having a heart attack yes. or something like that. Yes. So for, thank goodness yeah. you know, you made it through maybe it was your 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 work your work ethic. Yeah. And you yes. saying, I need to you know, I don't want to ruin my reputation. Right. And, have these, these girls five thinking little white girl right, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they come back to the store and say oh this and lady gave her the money and she not show up right I was like god please i got i have got to do those girls makeup right and that's all that was in my mind right right and that's what pulled like yeah. cut, pulled you through yeah yeah Amen. that is that is that is Amen. some story so now you in the hospital yes right like your friend said bernice Get your tail, yeah. stay right there. Yeah. You got to go to the hospital. Yeah. Now you're in the hospital. Talk to me about from that point to you coming up with the concept for the game. Yes. Well, how I came up with the concept is really because of my son. Because here we were in the hospital, a sad situation. We always joyful, laughful, playing and everything. Right. You know, just having a lot of fun. And, uh, I was in the hospital. He had left from New York and came and stayed at my side because he was he stayed in like a cot one of those roll out. So they had him here in the hospital, right. there in the hospital with me. So uh, you know, just being in the hospital and having him next to me, you know, and not able to. We cracked a few jokes, a few things, but every now and then I get up, you know, go walk to the bathroom. I had the the IV and right. all this. I mean. And I look at my face and it was all drooping right, down. Right. I was like, oh my God, it's crying. I feel like crying now mm -hmm. because um, it was something that I really, I said, my son can't take care of me like I want him to. Right, right. And knowing that we're so close and, and right. we always have a fun, I'm like, God, you know, God, I need you to heal me. I can't right. be in this hospital like this. Right. You know, what it is that you want me to do. Right. You know, and I was like, God, if you just heal me, just show me what you want me to do. Right. You know. I'll forever be grateful to you, you know, I'll right. commit myself, you know, to do anything you want me to do. Right. And uh, with me saying that, going into the bathroom, I never let my son hear right, that, right, you know right. what I mean? Because I didn't want him to know that I was that sad or right. upset because we were always laughing and joking. Right. So anyway, uh, maybe a couple of days after that, maybe it was a week after I was in there, I started getting revelations right. of games. Right. 
playing games for families because I come from a big family. I tell you, we were very close, always laughing and joking. Right. So I started just seeing it and just started jotting it down. Right. Everything that came to my mind, I started jotting it down. Right. And that's how I came up with the concept with the game. Right. Yes. So Miss Laura, she has, you know, a uh, this is the Christian Monopoly. Yes, that's what that's we're gonna what call it. it. We're gonna call it the Christian Monopoly. <laughs> And <laughs> it is. It so is. tell us a little bit about the game, Miss yeah. Laura. Uh, the game is, you know, the the idea came to me where I was giving him glory. Right. So it's called glory to God. Right. The number two. So I call it G to G. Right. Glory to God. Um, the game is a board game. Yep. And you have the choice to either go in on the left side or the right side. Yep. We go all across, because we do make our own choices in right. life. A lot of things that happen in us are because of our own choice. Right, oh, for and sure. And that's when people blame others for it. No, it's not others, they're at fault. Right. We are because of our own decision. Right, yeah. Okay, so anyway, the game is for you to go all the way across the board and get to the other side. Right. But as you encounter going across the board yep. you might run into something tell you go back two spaces sometime right. in life Somebody you got to go back, back. Oh, yeah, yeah. setback mm -hmm. uh tells you uh you you were in an accident or a friend was in an accident this yep. morning when you land on the space so what do you do what does god word say it's giving glory to god yep so in order for you to get all around the board yep. you have to know the bible right you cannot move around the board unless you know scriptures unless somehow you're able to go across this particular space right. that says, tell me what Psalm 118 says, right. you know, or tell me what uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 right. says. And then there's a part where you land in and it tells you to rest because God do want us to rest. And that's what he was taking me through, the rest. Lord, right. you're trying to do everything. Right. You're trying to uh, go do Victoria's Secret. Right. You're trying to handle these models. You got like 18 models. Then you're trying to also do uh, the barber signs, teaching girls, makeup and everything on the weekend. Why? You don't right. need to do all that. He says, sit down. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that's where Matthew 11, 28 came from. It's right, right at the top of the cross when uh -huh. you go across the board. Because you're going to land on dark spaces. You're going to land on certain spaces to tell you, go rest. Right. Sit and reflect on what you're doing in life. Right. And what is your purpose? Right. Why are you here? Yep. Why are you trying to do everything when I already did everything? Right. Right. So I, I love that. I, I have to be honest, though, Miss Laura. I wouldn't be good at the game. Yeah. I would not be because I don't know yes. scriptures like that. Yeah. So, I you know, if you invited me to play the game, I probably yeah. would have to sit it out. But I would no. love to see... You would learn, though. You I, would learn. Yeah, so I would watch. It's like, right. you know, that person that don't really know how to play spades, they watch while everybody else is, is, is like, playing. That would right. be me. Right, um, But I do know how to play spades. But, yeah. yes. but I'm glad you said that. You know how to play spades. Yep. Not only did he gave me the board game, he gave me two card games. Right. He gave me the cards for the uh, young people between the ages of 9 to 12. Yep. So they learn how to play the cards without the scriptures, because right. uh, most uh, young people has to deal with vision, you know, visual. Right. They learn, right. you know, different right. cards. So they can learn, yeah. you know, by seeing. Whereas uh, young adults and uh, older adults, you learn by hearing, right. seeing, and hearing. Right. So I have two deck of cards and the board game. All this is to glorify God. Right. So let's let's talk about um, Nas. Okay. All right, so what is Nas? Nas is a game that came to me recently in 2014. Yep. So far, I have seven Christian games. Yep. Seven, you wouldn't believe how so, the ways that God give me ideas. Right. You know, and one of the games, just to give you an example, yep. um, I'm going to tell you about the Nas. Yep. But my son said to me like uh, four weeks ago, we was doing something. Yep. And there was a, a crossword puzzle on the back of the cereal box. Yep. And he said, Ma, this is a crossword. I've never seen a crossword puzzle. On I said, cross, crossword. I started jotting it down. Right. Okay, the cross. Next thing I know, I'm doing all of the book. The New Testament and the Old Testament, and, yep. and a crossword puzzle. Uh huh. I never. I don't know where that came from. That right. had to come from within because, just by my son saying crossword right. puzzle, I thought of the cross. Right. And then do words. I did right. the whole Old Testament. Yep. And the New Testament. Yep. Two different versions. Of, of now, crossword. Crossword. 
Right. Each word falls into place from the New Testament. Each word falls into place from the uh, Old Testament. Right. I was just amazed that that came out of me. So that's another game that I had to get copywritten, patent, and everything. Right. But now to the Nas game. Yeah. That came to me uh, in 2014. Yeah. Uh, someone said to me, uh, I went to African American uh, Historical Association a meeting because they had honored me, gave me uh, uh, a little uh, uh, Harry. Uh, I can't think of her name. Yeah, Harriet Freeman. Tubman. No, not uh, Harriet Tubman. Uh, Freeman Award. Right. Because I was doing a lot of things in the community, bringing yep. food for the kids, giving backpacks for back to school and everything. Right. I was doing it every year, having something for the kids in the neighborhood. Right. So anyway, uh, I came up with the idea of the Nas game because when I went to this meeting, someone says, you do not know your history. And I was like, what? To you? I, to me. And, and I felt you so said. bad. Yeah. I didn't know, but I'm going to find out. <laughs> I didn't know my black right. history, but I'm going to find out. <laughs> Next thing I know, I was going in the library, looking online, right. looking on my phone, everything I could about right. black people who were the first that did something. Right. I already had right. the G to G game. I know right. I'm the first to do that. Right. I do know that. Right. So next thing I know, I was looking up everything in the uh, first black man and this, first black woman, and I just started jotting it down. And I came up with the idea of not a slave. Right. It means not to have that slave mentality, right. feeling sorry for yourself. I can't do this because of this man. I can't be doing this because of that. No one holds you back but you. Right. So that's how I came up with the Nas card game. Yes, in the Nas card game, like each card in the game is a you know either a historical figure, right, right in Black history, a uh, Black college, yes. right. A, Black black church card. First black church. Right. First black college that's here in America. Yep. It could be a first black singer. It could be the first black actress. Everything is the first. The first That black. made a yep. difference. Because they didn't have the slave mentality. They had to go through something. Even Rosa Parks is in there. She knows she couldn't take it anymore sitting on the bus. Right. Like, I'm not moving nowhere. Right. Having that attitude where you can do this. Right. You're entitled to this. Right. It belongs to you. Right. So. Yeah, but no, I think that that's really, really clever. Yeah. You know, I love the board game. Yeah. I love the way that it looks. Thank you. Um, and as well as the card game. Thank and you. you know, before we got on the podcast, you know, you took me through. You, you know, took me through it yes. with the prototype. So that's why I said, listen, I'm. I have to have Miss Laura on the podcast. <laughs> Thank you. You Thank know, you. and let Thank you tell you. your story yeah. because, you know, a lot of times. You know, like you said, you didn't know that you were having the stroke, no. right? You had it and you kind of was in a state where you could have been like that yeah. part for the rest of your life. Yes. Right? Yes. And you were able oh to, you know, you put your, you know, faith to practice. Yes. And yes. like God brought you through it. And, yeah. you and know, I refuse to let those little girls down. I'm like, whoa, right? I, that was a nothing. That was the main thing that made me get up that morning and do those girls mega. I refuse to right. let them think, oh, this black woman just trying to take that off took with the our money. money. Yeah, no way. Right, <laughs> right. Um, no, that, that no. Trust me, I, I understand. Yeah, but I, I'm still, I'm yeah. miss. I gotta see a picture of something, Miss Laura, because you was talking about how your hand was moving. Yeah, I need to see the makeup. My. <laughs> My, well, it's not. I could probably get some pictures, yeah, from those girls. It wasn't that bad. It's just putting some powder on her, a little right, blush, you right, know. Right. Knowing Nothing skin tones, real. I'm really good at that, yes. you know. Which it comes, to, it doesn't matter about your skin tone. Right. Blending makeup, so them being very fair skin, it was just a little powder. I didn't really put liquid makeup. Right. I have a tendency to use just powder, even on my own skin. Right. Because liquid gets into your pores. Right. And that's why I mean, I'm 65 years old. Right. You would never think that. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and like I said earlier, yeah. she tall. I didn't yeah. think you was that tall, Miss Laura. <laughs> <laughs> when you came through the door. But yeah, so I can see how you, you know, are, you know, somebody would tap you to say yeah. you should be a model. Yeah. 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 But no, that's that's great. Let's talk let's talk about fashion. Let's talk about yeah. style, Mr. Yeah. 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 So what would you kind of say is your style? Like and where did it come from? I can say my style is uh classic and trendy. Yep. I have a tendency to like put retro together with what's trending. Yep. Yeah. But do my own thing. I never ever wanted to look like somebody. Right. You know, my mother was always yelling at me, Why are you cutting that up? Why the hell? Ooh. 
Right. Why? It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> she said, why the hell did you put them sneakers in my pot for my collard greens? I would dye my shoes and right. I would get yelled at. Right. And and that's basically what I'm doing, designing and styling. You know, right. That's the main thing. You know, I went to school for fashion design. Right. But my style is very classic, mm-hmm. you know, and trendy. Yes. You know, retro and a little combination of both. Right. Yeah. 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 So, and, and where do you think that came from? It's my just, mother and my father. Yep. My father was a sharp dresser, really good looking man, yeah. tall. I mean, I was very close to him. Right. And my mother, she was very passive, but she was sharp too. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so let let's see. Um, so you actually you have your son here with you today. Yes, yes. Does your son know how to tie a tie? <laughs> Do you know how to tie a tie? Okay. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I always I had ask, to show him a couple of right, times. Right, right. So I always ask yeah. the guests, um, you know, do they know how to tie a tie? Yeah, I know. How but to yeah, know. I know you know how to tie a tie. <laughs> but since you brought your son here today with you, I had to make, I had to ask him if he, if he know how to tie a tie. <laughs> he um, to yeah. So talk a little bit about your like fashion page. Oh, my fashion page. Well, I have. A, I just started a line called Yo Jackets, yep. and it stands for Your Own your own jacket, your yep. own style. Right. Uh, I'll design a jacket, but I give you the choice of p- selecting the fabric, right. the material, and the color. Yep. That's what I'm starting right now. And yep. I will have my website up in real soon, by yep. the end of September. But I have an Instagram page with Yo Jackets. Yep. And the jeans I started, oh, almost 25 years ago. Those holes with the jeans, right. I, that started was you? That. They I started stole that. They stole your thing, Miss Laura. But let me tell you, I sent, <laughs> I sent pictures to Guest Jeans, right. uh, Seven Mankind, yep. Religion, Levi, all of them. Nobody was doing that but me. I have right. jeans that are 30 years old, yep. older than those young girls around here that's rocking them. And right. I still wear, I still fit those jeans. Right. You know? So you'll see that on my Instagram page as well. Mm-hmm. And I made a note of it because you see some mag- magazine articles on stories about me doing my jeans for so long. Right. Yes. Right. So where's some of the, let, let me ask you this, Miss Laura, where's some of the places that you like shop that, that you would like go to to like buy something? Uh, I'd rather shop in boutiques. Right. Something small. Like something small, small place. Yeah. something I can find something. And sometimes I'll go inside a retro, I go inside Buffalo, I go in those shops, right. some, uh, Goodwill, something, yep. trying to find something old and reconstruct, you know, redo it over. Right. You know, I really like. I love thrift shops more than I do anything else. Right, yeah. So yeah. so um, the guest that was on the podcast before you, you know, we talked about that for a couple oh, minutes wow. where, you know, we talked about sometimes the best thing, some of the things that I get the most compliments yes. on come from the Goodwill, yes. you yes. know? Yes. So so it's, it's, it's just like, you know, in my experience, I'm always able to go there and find something. Quality. Right. Quality, yeah. too. Yeah, people the just throw this stuff away. Quality. Yeah, because uh, uh, the, the new trend now, most of the materials, I really don't like it. Right. When you go into the store, or, you know, the material isn't the same. Right. You know, the retro, you'll find the best material. Right. They stand, I mean, good quality. Nobody loves it more than me quality right. and you got to know materials too a lot of people don't know materials they right. buy those cheap right. materials you know yeah it's uh just like my silk blouse i mean i know silk and i know there's 16 different silks you right. know you right. gotta know fabrics i had to learn that when i was going to school for fashion design right and uh the only thing i couldn't get together was draping i hated draping right <laughs> right but other than that when it came to styling and doing things i i, I was just in my own very very creative right I'm a very creative person yeah I mean that is that's beautiful right because yes. not only are you coming up with your games yes. you're also coming up with things that people can can, yes. can wear yes. and, and, and the beauty of all of it is it's your legacy yes right yes. after you are gone you right. know uh, G to G is going to be yeah. here and I'll right? be in that Nasdaq and, and, and you'll be in there in in the, yes you will in the building Nasdaq having that mentality I can do this I can do this and, yes yeah yes so that is the beauty of creating your own things because yes. you are truly leaving your mark in yes. history and yes. it is I your agree. legacy yeah yeah so after you're gone, Nas will be here. Yes. G to G will be here. Yes. Right? Um, yo, yo jackets will yes. be here. All yeah. of that will be here. Yeah.